Wakey Wakey, written and read by Dustin Ashley Beam. One, the entrance. What is that? Derek fumbled with the comforter, searching to find what his foot was touching. It did not feel normal. In the middle ground of sleep and reality, he fought to gain composure, and then he saw it. Perched at the foot of his bed was a creature that defied explanation. He looked into its eyes, and the creature looked back with a fury and curiosity that made Derek struggle to find his breath. Who are you? insisted Derek, sounding as though he had discovered some intruder robbing the house, attempting to mask the terror in which he was drowning. This dark, horrid thing played an elaborate game of stare. Although Derek realized this was no game, this beast was a stark contrast from the slumber world in which he had inhabited mere minutes ago. That is when Derek noticed why he could not breathe. The evil essence crouched at the foot of his bed, no taller than three feet, could that be right, was inhaling the air of the room. It seemed to garner joy from doing this, and the fact that it had taken Derek far too long to note what it was doing. Derek had an unnerving realization. He knew this monster. They had met before, although he could not place where. Who are you? he demanded. And with his newfound power, he both startled the entity and leveled the playing ground. The monster stopped its nefarious act and laughed a chuckle that pierced the bedroom. Bounding through the room, it made an elaborate exit. It was like the dance of the spider before it ingests the trap fly. Beautiful, yet menacing. But not before stopping at the door during the demonic ballet to stare back at Derek and growl, You'll see. 2. The Awakening. It had been hours since the encounter. Derek was deep asleep, fighting his psyche to not bring the dreams of Dad, a finality of death. He kept replaying the heart monitor's last sounds before the final long flatline. In those few moments, he lived several lifetimes, watching his dad leave and knowing that there was indeed a soul. For the shell that remained was no longer alive, no longer dad. Then he transported two days earlier in the hospital waiting room to when he and his brothers had to convince mom to take dad off life support, having to tell mom to extinguish him. Dad, Derek sobbed. Wakey, wakey, intoned the demon. What are you doing here? blasted Derek, still reeling from the nightmare prison. Because you called me to you, hissed the foul goblin. Why would I call a demon to me? The incubus roared with laughter. Is that how you see me? That does make sense. You? And with this word, the creature's voice started to slowly change. Feel so guilty over something you could not have possibly controlled. What are you talking about? What is happening to you? Look at me, Derek. Really look at me. It is time. You remember me, don't you? You know me. He did know this entity. But how? You have been in my room and in my bed for weeks now, ever since December 1st, ever since your dad died, Derek finished the sentence. This is your room? In that instant, he became less afraid and less angry. A calmness washed over him. Are you real? Ha, ah, labeling. I am as real as the bed on which you sleep, and as real as Wonderland. Reality is subjective. I live because you brought me to life. It is the balance of nature. One thing dies, and another is born. With this explanation, Derek started to see the creature's eyes change from crimson 
to a gentle blue, his scaly skin fading to a soft green. Derek, I am grief. You created this chamber on your own house, a room to escape, a room to visit your pain, your anger, your guilt, your loss. I am what you make me. Do you still see me as a demon? No, you're changing. Good! That will continue to happen as you walk this journey. I have never been a demon, nor wanted anything bad for you. I am the love you felt and feel for your dad. Because you were terrified of the loss, you saw me as a demon, a creature that was stalking you. Did you know my dad? Yes, I did. I am everything he was and is. What is your name? Laughter filled the room, but nothing like the previous guttural sounds from earlier. It was his dad's warm chuckle. I am Snoiger. It has been a long time since someone asked me my name. So you help others? inquired Derek. Grief is everywhere, thus so am I. I am your own version and unique to you. Soon you will start seeing the beauty of grief. The beauty of grief? Yes, I don't mean to say that your dad's absence will not be keenly felt for all your days, but the spectrum of sadness only adds to the light. Your life will be more abundant because you suffered the loss of your dad. Trust me. I do. Anything else, Snoiger? Yes, you are on my side of the bed. And with that, Derek and Snoiger embarked on the winding and necessary road called grief. Together. <laughs>